You have been recording, right? That's... I'm going to put the coffee down like we both got the same Yeah, coffee. yeah, I got you. <laughs> These two fuckers are lying. You're they've... thinking. You're thinking there, Robert. Mm -hmm. Not just a hat rack. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when you're good there, Luis. Good to go? All right, good to go. <clears throat> good. All right, there's the man, the legend. John, what's up, brother? Mr. O'Neill. Good to meet you. It's glad to meet you in person, man. Hell yeah. We are here uh, in, in the outskirts of New York City. Outskirts, outskirts of New outskirts York. Of New York. We got the beautiful river beside us, the bubbling brook. Yeah, that's what New York's known for. <laughs> Just like New Jersey's the Garden State. So uh, <laughs> it's going down. I'm going to do my first experience of the, with DMT today. Yeah, I think this is part of sort of the big picture of getting the truth out about psychedelics. That they're uh, the reason that they're not getting a lot of steam is because they're a cure to a lot of problems. And, they don't uh, want that. Big Pharma doesn't want a cure. They no, love, no. They love fear. They love treatments. God forbid it actually helps you long, long term. And you well, know. It, it does too. It's, <laughs> I, I, I did. I did my first major trip to Mexico a couple months ago. Life changer. No kidding. Uh, in and around here to get able to get DMT. Which I've seen people do different stuff, and they've had like everything from ayahuasca to the magic frog. Sure. All that. The frog thing. I have never done that, but that, I mean, might, that might that, be, that might have to be part two. Episode two. We'll go find the frogs. Well, no, well, there's a river right here. There might be some frogs <laughs> right down frog. there. That's a different high when you lick the New York City frogs. I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give high. them those New York City rats. <laughs> <laughs> but. Okay. Uh, um, but yeah, because the, there's this misconception that psychedelics are a club drug, and and sure. what you're gonna see is the I mean, once you take the medicine, the last thing you want to do is go to a club. Yeah, that's a uh, tear your own eyeballs event horizon type shit. So I there's there's guys, and I'm talking like uppity manager types in my hometown back in Canada that have these little pens, yes. DMT pens, and mm -hmm. they walk around and they do them at yeah. parties and they can stuff. And those. I'm looking at them and I'm going, what are you doing? The parties, I wouldn't say so much. I'd, I'm telling you, man, he's <laughs> passing it around. I'm like, bro, like I've heard this is kind of. I'm not really looking to do this. I'm at more the comfortable party. laying down and uh, being at peace with the universe. But it's, but I mean, what, what it, so what, that's a different vibe though. The pen, I'm assuming. The pen's. I, I don't know if the pen's the same one that that because uh, because we're taking the. Uh, the medicinal grade, I guess, is the way you call yeah. it. Okay. But again, it's not. I mean, and and DMT is intense. It's it's not as long as something like ibogaine. Yeah. Um, but there's you know uh, even like uh, um, uh, like ecstasy is what they call the club drug. That's a club drug. But the, yeah. the pharmaceutical grade is one you can help with everything from trauma PTSD. Like like uh, um, I, it wasn't even intentional. But when I did um, ibogaine, I had like the smells of cigarettes disgust me. I used to smoke. And I wasn't even trying to quit smoking. <laughs> I, I haven't had a cigarette in five yeah. days, yeah. randomly. So yeah. I'm, I'm on that, and I need to stop. And it was almost well. The thing with it too My is like uh, is um, the the smoke tastes <laughs> smells like shit. Yeah. And even like walking in, uh, I've been known to drink too much once in a while. But even after <laughs> after a treatment, walking past a bar, just looking at it, and it doesn't make sense right now. And that's kind of the way it works. This it, is going to be a beautiful. And thing, then guys. and then again, like I've been to combat. A lot of people have not, but you don't need to have been to combat to feel stress. Something traumatic that happened a while ago that you don't even realize bothers you. And this medicine will take you there, and you sort of make peace with it. And it's not a, it's not closure, but it's healing. My uh, buddy fell off his Clydesdale and smashed his head open about three weeks ago, and I had to drive him to the hospital. And I know that's nothing, but it was like a moment where I was like, I thought my buddy might die. Well, if he dies, that's traumatic. Nah, yeah. yeah, it was. It was being it was around a, a Clydesdale itself is traumatic. Bro, he's riding. He's, he's like, get on. I'm like, I, and then that happened, bro. I don't think I'm ever gonna get on a horse. No. Well, Clydesdales, <laughs> are, that's like going right into the NBA. No, they're, they're, people don't Huge. usually ride the Clydesdale, no, they right? Pull, they pull trains. Yeah, that's what I told them. I'm like, you guys are fucking nuts. Yeah, they Anyways. were around before the steam engine, I think. So we're c cruising right in. So what have you, if I may ask, like, what have you found it's done for you as far as you mentioned you use this as a treatment? Um, Just uh, being at peace, bit. getting rid of anxiety. Uh, a lot a lot with some post-traumatic stress, especially combat, I'll find myself looking over my shoulder, which is not a bad thing, situational awareness. No, but no. there are also times when it's like, you can chill a little bit, and this yeah. helps me with that. Well, because it used to be like if, if I could, uh, I, you know, even in my house, I'm always checking. But with the, you know, obviously you want to stay safe. That's hard but I could, I could go downstairs now at 3:30 in the morning, turn the lights off, meditate with my eyes closed, and not nothing bothers me. There it is, beautiful. It's peaceful. I mean, it's it's, it's uh, you know they they say it's the God molecule. You see it twice naturally, once when yeah. you're born and once when you die. Yeah, that's right. And you're gonna see it today, and that's and I like I just had a baby, so. Uh, um, and I did treatment a while back, and, really and what my mind reminded me during my last treatment was the reason your baby's crying is because they're used to the womb, and they're seeing what you're seeing right now, and it's scary as shit for oh, an shit. so don't be afraid to pick them up and yeah. let them know they're safe. And that's the, the whole thing with DMT. When um, when uh, when you're taking it, when you're under, you're still, you're still conscious, so just remember, I'm safe. 
and just let it take okay. you. And, and, and the medicine okay. sort of talks to you, but it's it's you talking to yourself, but it's opening different parts of your mind. And it's totally, um, like I'm not gonna go straight hippie chick on no, you, no, but no. it's totally spiritual, okay. totally cleansing and peaceful. And I got a SEAL Team 6 guy, he's got yeah. my 6. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm, so I'll be dead. the one that's we're crying, wait and see. <laughs> it was a crazy New York moment. We're sitting in there listening to some jazz, guy sketching on his new, like the most beautiful sketch I've seen. Yeah. Just like picture perfect of the York's, people across. Yeah. And I'm just like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is where I belong as an artist, right? That's, that, that's the place. New York's New York, man. It always, what I love about New York is, is uh, no matter where you are in the world, if you say I'm going to the city, you mean New York. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Let me ask you this. This is kind of a random one. Do you ever go down in the, and kind of just stare at, yeah. uh, at Ground Zero and just um, take a look at, at uh, what happened there? Because I'm actually going to go down there. Definitely go down there. Yeah, um, yeah I, go, I go down there usually now just for events. I've been there a bunch. My, my shirt that I wore on the Bin Laden raid is in there at the very end. No shit. Yeah, I, I got okay, that. Okay, we got to go see it that. Was, uh, I donated it anonymously uh, yeah. just with my American flag. I didn't want any... I'm not trying to take credit for it. No, no, no. But they put it in there. It's pretty cool. It's next to the woman Maya. Her coin's in there. They got a brick from the house in there. And who was Maya? Sorry. Maya was the CIA girl that found him. Gotcha. gotcha. She was, her name was Maya in the movie. She's Jessica Chastain. You. <laughs> <laughs> now, said. Now, in her defense, she fucking nailed that yeah, role. Yeah, yeah. She? she was good. She was good. And she, I mean, she's so hot. <laughs> Let's be honest. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, when we were training for the two weeks, we had a two-scale model of his house that we would talk about. The perfect plant, like down yeah. to the tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get done with a, like 10 hours of fast roping, six hours of talking or whatever, and a couple hours of sleep. And she would say, okay, guys, um, Osama bin Laden's on the third floor of this house right, right now. now. I don't understand why we're not going to sleep well. There. As long Next as day. the helicopter doesn't crash, eh, Robert? <laughs> Cra I think the crash landed. <laughs> worst that's case that's why it saved everybody's What life. was it? What's the worst case scenario yeah. on your one helicopter goes crash. helicopter? Youngest guy in the room. <laughs> he, the, uh, the youngest guy in the room. He was there because, uh, he, well, he was the dog handler. Unbelievable. Uh, he, he had Cairo. So he was the most experienced dog handler, but he was also the youngest guy there. Gotcha. gotcha. So he brought Cairo. Okay. All right, brass tacks. Do you got any tips for me before we go in there? Just, uh, um, just You know what you got to do is just be grateful. Okay. Um, realization that this is you're just exploring your mind and uh it's it's all you're coherent you can open your eyes at any time but okay. just the first five seconds shooting through the atmosphere and okay. then once you once you circles jupiter you know you're good to go all right i'll keep my eye out for the yeah. big storm you won't need to worry about it because you can see 360. Okay. So keeping the eye out, it's not going to matter. It's crazy, but it's, it's awesome. <laughs> it's so relaxing. I'm going to be there with you. You're yeah. going to see me do, do so it. So you mentioned you mentioned you might I might if you're okay with it. I might go first. You want to go first? I'm that guy that like I don't. Okay. When I jump into the water off a cliff, I don't look over the edge. Perfect. I just fucking okay. run and jump. So you I'm go gonna, first. I'll chill with you. If you if you don't mind. Not at all. All right, that's guys. That saved that whole conversation. So I guess yeah, we're good. No yeah. point for nothing. Let's I'm do just this. gonna do it. Yeah. And then <laughs> right. and then I, then I can kind of unwind and uh, and then. Cool. All right, let's go. Let's do it. But like I'm still here. I kind of thought, you know, it's, it's. Well, the witness is always going to be present. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very interesting. Yeah. And I feel like that 
was tip of the iceberg. I didn't mean that. It's okay. It was a good first run. It's a great. I think it was perfect Excellent. for me. Yeah. Excellent. So happy for you. How long did that last? Um, seven minutes total. Yeah. Okay. Can I sit up? Is that all right, sure. I think? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not gonna try and describe it, guys, but it's beautiful. You're at home, you're not, uh, it's not like you get taken somewhere else. You're still very much, yeah. Like I said, I'm not gonna try and describe it. Um, that was definitely tip of the iceberg though, guys. Um, I do believe, hey Robert, we, we filmed that, eh? I yeah. kinda, yeah, okay, so that is, you guys will see the reaction my body had to it. I don't think I pooped my pants or anything. No, 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 so that's. <laughs> I was, I was, I was kind of you, you might poop my pants. <laughs> um, God, my laugh feels good right now. My face wants to smile. I'm not just saying this stuff, guys. But that was tip of the iceberg, and I can't wait to come back and go all the way, submerge all the way. I think my mind needed that. I don't know, that appetizer, whatever you want to call it. But I needed to familiarize myself with that. I'm ready now to go, but it's not happening today, guys. That was today's journey. I'm very tranquil, doesn't even do it justice. Anyways, that's the ramblings from a fella who just tried DMT for the first time, guys. Okay. Highly recommend. But anyways, okay. All right, I'm gonna stop talking now. I was, I was at home in my house in Tennessee. I'm having a couple of drinks, watching Minneapolis burn. Yeah. And I tweeted out. Oh God. I tweeted out, "Black lives definitely matter." Yeah. But this is a Marxist organization, BLM. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Cancel. So, so my show Zero Shark Thirty never came That's to fruition. That's why those fucking dummies, man. And but look at it now. You know, look at the fallout four years later. I think most people would 100 percent agree with right. you. Yes, you were right. See, look, I mean, I look agree. at what. Look at I 100 percent agree. However, these Marxists are stealing your cash. And then, forget a little bit of this. So the whole, the whole point, the whole point of my, uh, I thought Nat Geo would love this. The whole point of my show was to prove, the, the very end of my show was to prove that uh, I can swim by myself off the coast of California at night yeah. and not be harmed. Which, yeah. by the way, is scary as fuck. No doubt. But I did, I did it by myself. A total of six hours filming with just a drone. Jesus Christ. I, and I'm God. talking two in the morning, dark as fuck. And I, I had to get out uh, further because I wanted the water to be really clear. Um, and so anyway, here's we the gotta best. find a way to get that out somehow. I'm trying. Yeah, that's I, crazy. I for it. But here's the. But I'm trying to teach people. You're not on the menu. You can swim with sharks. I'm proving it. And I'm out there in the water alone. So there's drones that's above me. There's the, here's the best part. There's one boat. Uh, like there's a safety boat, far away. Yeah. And it's doing a sonar thing. And they're showing me the sonar after all of my swimming, surface swimming by myself with a drone. And they said, uh, well, here's the part where that one did come up. Do you gotta go? Oh, hold up. One came up to me. You didn't even know. And they, they go, yeah. I said, why didn't you say anything? They go, at that point, didn't matter. Oh, um, they're like, it's either going to yeah, bite his fucking arm off or it's you not. You being afraid is not going to stop it. So. Actually, this is not nearly as uh, crazy as swimming at night with sharks off the coast of California. But I went on to my local reserve and filmed a full documentary, interviewed city council, interviewed the biggest drug dealer in town there, who's a great community member there. Like, it's a fascinating, oh, yeah. That's cool. Did all this, got called in front of council, and they told me I can't post it or share it. Why? Because they control what gets out. It's a fucking dictatorship they, the, on the fucking the, reserve, man. They, and I didn't realize what's that. What's so crazy, and the left doesn't realize this, because they, this, like, they used to be punk rock against the machine. Now it's like depend on the government. Bro, for real. What if happened to fuck you? I want to do you tell me. Now it's rage against. Who said it? It's the. Um, rage who government. was it? Johnny Rotten. I think it was. Yeah. Johnny Rotten said, "I never thought I'd live to the day yeah. to see where he conservatives question the, the government." Yeah, and, yeah. And the libtards are the ones just I have no idea where that spoon came from. fed. Like, well, it's it's the pendulum of of, of humanity, but the, you know, fascism comes in many forms. And you know what though? No matter what. The one thing it always has in common is suppression of freedom of speech, yes. suppression of art. First two things. Oh yeah. Always. Suppression of art, yeah. Always. Because how do you well, how do you protest anything when you can't express well, it and then it's done? Here's it's true, true. How well, here, here's two what doesn't make sense because you always say that uh, a lot of people do stuff and then accuse you of what they're doing. Sure. It's like they're saying we need to lock up Donald Trump because we can't have a fascist. Like that's what fascists do. Nice. Yes. You have an election. That's it. What they're doing to Trump, and I, and you know me, I'm not really a big Trump guy either. But what they're doing to him is what 
Putin does to yes. his enemies, his political enemies. Just sort of poisoning. And the, but I'm waiting for the day to see. Like, I'm waiting for the day how, when I wake up. How many up. of the Secret Service agents belong to the swamp? Who knows? John Stewart. I just, we saw, we were talking about this yesterday. Yeah, Louis, John Stewart's house, 800% over. And who, oh my God, a real estate developer overvalued his property? That's never been done oh, before. Shit. It comes from, too, that, that uh, people don't realize. We were talking about PTSD and how people say, oh, that's for pussies. But then you get further away from it more detached and my, my biggest one is I, I killed this dude who's the second guy I killed in his house and I shot him in front of his wife yeah. right? and then I had to go white light on him just to make sure I killed him but then she sees it and so 15-20 years later I'm, what I'm thinking is okay now why did I shoot him well because he went for his gun Yeah. okay but why did he go for his gun well because I'm in his we house in his why house. am I in this house because fucking George Bush said we need to invade Iraq and then it's like what if I met him somewhere else would we have sat here and laughed was he funny did I just murder him it's the second thing you've uh, made me. Do you think second thing we've had where it made me think of Dune, um, where, where it's uh, it's fan. Honestly, you gotta gotta go see those. But um, Paul Atreides talks. It's like he, it's honestly like very DMT esque. Um, mm -hmm. The whole concept of spice. They take this hallucinogen that helps you see things and okay. clearer. Dune. In Dune, yeah, and in the whole the novel, yeah, you got it. Um, but he talks about he sees a vision of a friend, but he ends up killing the guy because they fight, but it's like every, in, in some reality, you probably are friends with that fucking guy. That crazy? You in know some what? dimension, it, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, man, we are. By the way, guys, we haven't even really hit the, oh, so we are fresh it. off our DMT trip, mm -hmm. and the conversation is flowing so crisp right now. Yeah. That's and, we, and it's we don't like, need a, we don't need a script. No. For what we're going to no, talk no, about No, no, this is going to be a great podcast. I'm excited, man. I wish we could do it right now. <laughs> I know, me. You have been recording, right? That someone <laughs> asked me, they said, what advice would you give someone going to the military right now? Yeah. So I'm saying, learn how to use a map and compass because your GPS is going to shit the bed when the war starts. There it is. Can you, can you get That's here, fucking fast. Can you get from here to there with a map and compass and can you start a fire? You know that movie, Leave the World Behind? Yes. You know the scene where Ethan Hawke goes, without <laughs> GPS or my phone, I am a useless man. That hit home for me because I yeah. felt like, oh shit, Should that's me. Well, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> But that he made a valuable boy. That's so random. Just they they, 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 they got that one set of monkey bars that we've all seen. <laughs> I, I would love Thank some. You. Yes, please. Mind has never been clearer. And I, I like I said, uh, you know, in, in, in the previous video, um, I was tip of the iceberg. How, how do you feel right now, Robert? Just Fantastic. before you take yeah. that first bite. Well, I, I know, I know the way that I want to do it, the way that to start it off and then get in the zone and then keep keep maintaining it till. Yeah. Um, my body's really good at telling Thank me you. that's enough. And yeah. It's time to bring it down. And you saw too at the end that like um, you're still in it. You just need. To, oh, it's, it, there's a lingering thing. It's even still lingering with me now, in in a beautiful way. It is not something. This is the main message I would say to anyone thinking about trying it for the first time. Don't. I, you know what's funny though is I'm gonna say this, and there's still. I had so many people say to me, "You said don't be scared." I was still a little scared. Yeah. I didn't know what it was gonna be like. All I can say is it is the most soothing, beautiful moments I've had. Yep. Uh, There's going to be apprehension, even with me. Some of the bad energy tries to tell me not to go. You're fine. Sure. Stop it. Don't sure, go. Sure, sure. Because that's literally the energy that you're getting rid of, telling you. Fucking crazy. It sounds ridiculous. No, no, no. The negative, it's like a parasite, right? The parasite wants to latch on and stay. Like, negative energy will, uh, you know. Wait a minute, nothing. It will, uh, it will try and convince you that you don't, need, you're you're don't need the help because it wants to stay rooted, right? The perfect uh, it's a post treatment treat. Just a quaint afternoon, little <laughs> little DMT, a little taco, a margarita. <laughs> you know, this is what we do. Okay, guys, here we are for the final uh, segment, the final chapter of the DMT experience. Uh, we're here in the Bang Bus. <laughs> um, listen, that was a un un unquantifiable, indescribable experience. At the same time, it was very. It was much more soothing and serene than I could have possibly imagined. So I, I had a, I, I, I had it in my mind that I was gonna shoot somewhere into another dimension. No, and I mean maybe that can happen um, on the day or depending on the dose. But I, I, I did ask the lady. I said she said I took one healthy toke um, on my second one, held it in for 15 seconds. I was high on DMT. It was nothing like I expected it to be. Um, and I mean that in the best way possible. And, and, and while I don't think I did feel the full effects of it, like I said, tip of the iceberg, I think, today, guys, I can feel 
a sense of, um, I don't even know. I was saying to Luis, even um, uh, the, a brotherhood, a camaraderie with Robert and even uh, our other friend that was there with uh, providing some guidance. Um, that bond has been solidified. Uh, it, it, is, it is something I think that works on a quantum level. Uh, what do I know about quantum physics? Not much, but I know that we are having an effect on our realities and I can tell if you use DMT in the right way, you can positively alter your reality. I think that's, I think that's the perfect, that, that is my final take on it, I think. And I can already tell, like how happy and buoyant am I right now, Luis? My frowny, mopey self is not here anymore. And he'll come back. I'm sure he will. But we're going to go again. I think I'm actually, before I leave New York City, so we're going to bounce down to Georgia in a week. I'll come back and we're going to do it again. I already talked to Robert and her about that. So we'll, we'll do this again in about a month and I will, uh, I will take a bigger toke and be more comfortable. I think the biggest uh, reason I wasn't able to fully dissolve um, was because of my apprehension and my fear of letting go. Because um, I just didn't, like, like, you know, you had no idea what you're walking into. It was a much more comforting, soothing situation than I could have ever imagined. So I'm excited to try it again. I'm a little bummed out that I don't have crazy alien stories or seeing mechanical elves to tell you guys about. Uh, but I wonder if that's even something that it's supposed to do. I mean, I, from what I can tell, I think each mind probably uses it in a very different way. My mind felt at home with that shit. So, so anyways, guys, that, that's it. Um, thanks for coming on the journey with me. If you're interested in trying the substance for yourself, I highly recommend it, but do it in a safe place. Don't just like take the pen that your buddy hands you at the party. Like be somewhere where you're comfortable. If you're comfortable in that scenario, go for it. But if you're trying to actually do something for your mind and body and, and soul and, and, and maybe do some healing, do it by yourself with a close-knit circle with people that can guide you and you will not have a bad time. Anyways, that's it. We'll see you on the next one. Here it is. How you feeling? I'm excited, man. We're gonna. We're, this is gonna be a legendary podcast. I can't wait.